So something pretty big just happened in the world of AI and robotics, something that could actually change how we interact with machines in the next few years. What if I told you a powerful AI, as smart as the big players, could run on your phone or your laptop with barely a blip on your electricity bill? Microsoft just dropped a bitnut B1.52B4T. Sounds like tech gibberish, right? It's not. This mind-blowing AI uses a simple trick with its data, needing just a fraction of the power. Forget expensive graphic cards, this thing runs on a regular CPU. Prepare to have your mind blown. Stay tuned. What sets this apart is its novel approach to model weights. Steering clear of the typical 32-bit, 16-bit, or even the more compact 8-bit formats you're familiar with. Instead, every weight within this network exists as negative 1, 0, or plus 1, averaging just 1.58 bits of information. They've compressed the precision so effectively that these three values cover all of the bases. After all, the logarithm base 2 of 3 gives us just enough wiggle room. You get the idea. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and watch the video to the end to find out more. Now you might wonder if we haven't seen 1-bit or 4-bit quantized models before. Technically, yes, but those typically start as high-precision models that are downsized later. While this post-training quantization helps save memory, it often leads to a drop in accuracy, a bit like a balloon that's slowly leaking air. In a refreshing twist, Microsoft trained BitNet from scratch using this ternary approach. By letting the model learn without the constraints of a floating point representations, it results in a 2 billion parameter transformer that has digested a staggering 4 trillion tokens. The team claims that it performs on par with heavyweight open source contenders that still lug around their floating point baggage. Now let's get into the impact on hardware, where this thing really heats up. Typically, a 2 billion parameter model in full precision requires about 2 to 5 gigabytes of VRAM when you factor out the embedding table. BitNet, on the other hand, comes at a mere 0.4 gigabytes. This drastic reduction in resource demand allows the model to comfortably fit within the L-cache layers of many CPUs, which is why this demo on Apple M2 chip can generate 5 to 7 tokens per second, the same pace at which a person reads a paperback. While in operation, researchers found that BitNet consumes 85 to 96% less energy compared to similar floating point models, comparing it to the difference between cruising in a Prius and tearing down the road in a muscle car. Of course, all this efficiency means little if the results are subpar. To test the metal, the team put BitNet through an array of demanding benchmarks, including MMLU, GSM8K, ARC Challenge, Hella Swag, PIQA, and Truthful QA. On 17 different assessments, BitNet achieved a macro score of 54.19%, just a hair of its float-based arrival in the same category, QN 2.5 at 55.23. Where BitNet truly shines is its logical reasoning capabilities. It topped the ARC challenge with an impressive 49.91%, led ARC Easy at a score of 74.79%, and outperformed the competition on the notoriously challenging Wino Grade test with a score of 71.9%. And don't think it's his math skills are a lucky break either. On GSM8K, BitNet achieved an exact match score of 58.38, surpassing every other regular 2 billion model out there, and even outpacing QN's 56.79, all while operating on perhaps a tenth of the power. Okay, let's talk smack about old school AI. You know those We Shrunk It 4-bit tracks? Yeah, they're like putting tiny tires on a Hummer. Kinda looks better, still clunky. Microsoft's BitNet? Think a quantum leap not baby steps. They didn't just squish a giant model. They built one from the ground up with ternary weights. That's negative one, zero, plus one, folks. The result? It's half the memory footprint that still punches harder on accuracy. Native ternary, retrofilled INT4. Mic drop. Let's take a closer look at the inner workings of the model. Don't worry, I'll keep it simple so you don't need to be a tech whiz to follow along. Imagine a traditional AI model as a massive warehouse filled with shells stacked high with hefty jars, each containing precise numbers. Whenever the model seems to provide an answer, it has to lug all these jars around. Now here comes BitNet, which swaps those bulky jars for lightweight, color-coded poker chips, red for negative one, white for zero, and blue for plus one. With just three types of chips, the entire warehouse shrinks dramatically, scaling down from several gigabytes to about the size of a single mobile game download. At the heart of this operation is a little worker known as the ABS mean quantizer. This tiny hero decides in real time which chip fits where while the model is running. Meanwhile, the communication happening between those shells gets streamlined into compact 8-bit Lego bricks, keeping the inner corridors clear and ensuring fast movement of information. However, this chip and brick approach can lead to a bit of wobbling in the structure, so the designers sprinkle in a touch of balanced powder, essentially a sublayer norm. 
They also opted for a similar squared RELU activation function base. In this context, similar equals sturdier. In addition, they've brought the LLAMA's 3's tokenizer, akin to handling over an already filled dictionary. This way, the model doesn't have to start from scratch learning a new alphabet. But why go through three rounds of training? Think of it like teaching a child. First, you whip through every book in the library at lightning speed, that's the 4 trillion token penetrating with a high learning rate. Then, you pause to let the child digest the information instead of just skimming over it, that's the cooldown phase. Finally, you provide practice exams with straightforward answers during the fine-tuning stage, allowing them to learn how to communicate without going off on tangents. Interestingly, the educators found that summing up grading points instead of averaging them helped maintain the steadiness of this low-bit brain. And since those tiny poker chips don't burst under pressure, they could push the lessons a bit harder. Importantly, the model never reverts back to those clunky textbooks. It relies on chips and Lego bricks throughout, ensuring nothing gets lost in transition. Now, running this model requires some special plumbing, as graphic cards expect those traditional jars instead of chips. So, Microsoft engineered custom software that combines four chips into a single byte, expertly navigating it across the GPU highway, unpacking it right near the math engine, and multiplying it with those 8-bit bricks. Thanks to this clever approach, BitNet can read around 5-7 to seven words per second using just a laptop CPU. If a GPU is not available, the BitNet CPP program performs the same dance on an ordinary desktop or Mac. All it needs is roughly 400 megabytes of spare memory, so even an Ultrabook can join in on the fun. But don't think Microsoft is resting on its laurels just yet. The last section of their paper reads like a checklist of what's next. They're eager to explore how well their native 1-bit scaling laws can hold up at 7 and 13 billion parameters, and even more. They're also actively encouraging hardware designers to create accelerators with specialized low-bit logic, so the calculations don't have to treat ternary values as old-school INT8 formats anymore. They've recognized that their current 4K token context needs to be expanded for longer documents, that their data is set predominantly in English, and that we've yet to explore the realm of multilingual capabilities. Additionally, the exciting field of multimodal hybrids that combine text with other formats remains largely unexplored with this ternary approach. The theorists are scratching their heads over why such intense quantization doesn't derail the learning trajectory, so it's responsible to expect upcoming papers discussing lost landscapes and resilience of bit flipping. Sure, everyone gets excited about those massive models boasting 100,000 token context windows and high price clusters, but BitNet B1.58 serves as a powerful reminder that sometimes a nimble coupe can outperform a roaring muscle car. When streets are tight and gas is premium, it's definitely worth keeping an eye on this space. Once the hardware catches up and the sequence length expands, we just might witness a full-blown ternary renaissance ahead.